Hi friends, welcome to Oracle Aura. My name is Jada Christina and I will be your host today. So today I am super excited to announce a special guest. Her name is Dr. Allison Cramp and she's a doctor of acupuncture and Chinese medicine with a background in Western medicine and biology. She specializes in women's health and digestive disorders using herbs, acupuncture, and nutritional support. With a passion for resolving the root of disease, she utilizes a balanced integration of evidence-based medicine with energetics of the body, mind, and spirit. When it comes to health, she believes in a gentle touch, a focused approach, and oftentimes less is more. Recent projects of hers include herbal oil infusions for the hair, face, and body, as well as calm packet formulas for anxiety and depression, and a PMS packet to ease the inevitable. She's often found commuting with friends, enjoying kratom tea, out on the beach, soaking in the sunshine, honing her craft with reading research and textbooks, and snuggling her two cute kitties at home watching movies. Please enjoy this episode of Oracle Aura with Dr. Allison Cramp. Welcome, Allison. Thank you. Happy to be here. I'm so glad that you're here. And I'm so glad that we crossed paths when we did because I just relaunched the podcast before I was doing Vivid Vibes podcast with my friend Laura. And Laura is a, she calls herself a sensitive, I would say a psychic. And so we were talking more about metaphysical things and I still love that type of thing, but I actually did an Oracle card reading for you and that's how we met. Yes. And you were telling me that um, you are a practitioner of holistic health. I am. I am. And in about seven weeks, I will officially have the title doctor of uh, acupuncture and Chinese medicine. I went to get my doctorate and finally finished my last assignment <laughs> uh, just Yay. a few days ago. So that's really exciting. So in seven weeks, I get my diploma. I'll be official. So that's congratulations. Exciting. Thank you. That's so <laughs> exciting. So tell me a little bit about what it is specifically that you do. Cause I remember you saying that you specialized in women's health. Yes. Okay. So tell me about what you do. Okay. So <laughs> it's a big question. <laughs> so we got time, girl. We got an hour. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I, I guess a little bit about what I do is Chinese medicine is about uh, bringing balance back into the body. And I feel like you, you of all people would be familiar with that kind of idea with metaphysical, um, metaphysical ideas and Chinese medicine, more or less, uh, you know, we all know about yin and yang and, um, we apply natural ideas to the body, like hot and cold, damp and dry. And we figure out different in, well, we categorize different symptoms in the body as different natural patterns. So, okay. so say for example, um, say for example, you're having menstrual cramps. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times it can be due to cold in the body and cold in nature is constricting. So you feel that you feel that with period cramps and why does a hot pad feel better? Cause it's cold. Yeah. So that's part of the idea of Chinese medicine is that we identify those patterns in the body and we give it the opposite to bring healing and better circulation to that area so the body can heal itself. So that's my whole job. Wow. Do you do any work with herbs or? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Okay, <laughs> cool. So is, would you say you prescribe more herbs and things like that than do you prescribe other medicines? Do you also work with pharmaceuticals or is it mainly herbs? So, okay. So there, there's a little bit of backstory to this, which is kind of cool. So, um, acupuncture in the United States is, uh, the licensure is based off of states. So it's not, it can't, there is a national board where you can take four board exams. Uh, and then the state requirements, uh, tell us how many of those we have to take. Uh, in order to be licensed in that state. So I can be licensed here, but not be licensed in Texas or something. Okay. I would have to make sure that I have the certain requirements. So mm -hmm. in this state, um, we, Florida is one of the biggest states, like with the biggest scope of practice com like next to California. And so that means we have to take all four national boards, all of them. 
And that means, oh, let me think about this for a second. <laughs> um, so in the state of Florida, we have to take four board exams, meaning one of those is the herbal board. And in many states, you do not have to take the herbal board or you don't practice herbal medicine at all. So you have acupuncturists and practitioners of oriental medicine. So I okay. am a practitioner now, almost a doctor of oriental medicine. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> and I, at first, when I got into acupuncture school, I was thinking like, ah, I don't know, like, I don't want to do herbs. Like that just seems like so much. Like totally. there, it, there's, there's hundreds, if not thousands of herbs that we have to learn. And uh, we'd have to apply all that immense knowledge into uh, building a whole medicine for somebody. And I didn't want to do it. I, I just didn't, I, I, I didn't have the passion for it. I had had experiences with herbal medicine early on that I, I, I didn't feel the effects and mm. I wasn't interested and I actually had a colleague of mine who graduated around the same time from herbalism school. So there, there are just herbalism schools around. And she treated me with herbs. She's like, oh, you've never, you've never had an effect? Let me try. And I'm like, oh, okay, it's been years. And I would love to see if someone can do something uh, for my stuff. So she did. And the first, after the first formula, I was like, oh my gosh, I feel better. How, how does this happen? Like yes. I, I, there, are, I, I've seen numerous practitioners, all sorts of stuff. And I finally felt better. And I was like, what did you do? You need to tell me your <laughs> secrets. She went to a totally different school than me. So I was like, you need to tell me more. What is that? What is it that I was missing or that they were missing? And, uh, so we talked about it and, uh, she inspired that, uh, she inspired that herbalist in me and yes. I was like, Oh, you know what? And, and since then she is, she had been, she had treated me for uh, six plus months and I was, I, I was thrilled. I felt so much better. I was like, okay, now I see it. Okay. I'll get more serious about it. So now, um, you can get like either raw herbs, you can get patents, you can get, um, herbs that are raw, but ground up. So you can just make a tea out of that. Mm -hmm. Um, so patents tend to be the easiest herb to prescribe to people. And what is that? So it's kind of, so patent herbs tend to be in a pill form or a little ball form. So you can take it easily, like on the go. It's like, you know, when, like you take your vitamins or supplements, okay. uh, granule herbs are ground up and powdered. So you have to scoop them into water Okay. and those tend to be more potent. They're stronger just because they're ground up. It's easier right. for the body. Right. And you can make a customized formula for somebody where patent herbs will address one or two patterns somebody has. Mm. A ground up granule customized formula can address all the patterns that you see in that person. So it's much more beneficial and more potent to have that granule herb, uh, granule formula. So she inspired me to get really, you know, get really excited about herbalism and what they, and the possibilities that they can do. Cause she opened my mind up and I'm so excited that now at this point I'm doing custom formulas for people and seeing incredible results. So, uh, long story, <laughs> but, <laughs> but there was just, there was so much behind that for me for, for herbalism. And, um, we do, so we are able to prescribe herbs. We are able in the state of Florida to uh, prescribe certain supplements. Uh, so I do, you can work with functional nutrition. Like you can prescribe somebody vitamin D and uh, L-glutamine or something. And I have those available too. Um, and specifically supplements for women's health are in my cabinet as well. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's so amazing. Mm -hmm. It's so interesting to hear so many different people who are in the healing realm almost every single one of their stories starts with this thing helped me heal and I wanted to help other people experience that. Like for me, when I started teaching yoga, it was like, or the inspiration for it rather, I started practicing yoga and it started healing my body. Right. Like something clicks. You're like, oh my God. <laughs> exactly. And I was like, I have to share this with people. Like people have to know about this. And now I'm working on a one-on-one -on -one basis with my boyfriend who also has chronic pain and he's seeing relief from his chronic pain with yoga. And it's, it's just, right. It's such a beautiful feeling to be able to help people that way. Right. That's exactly what sparked me when I, you know, when I was getting into it, it it's, it, it comes as a click and it's, 
it just it makes sense. It makes sense. And you just, you can't help but share it with everybody. You're like, everybody needs to know about this. Oh my gosh, everybody needs to know that they don't have to suffer. They don't have to deal with this thing like, you know, like, like our current uh, Western medical uh, framework says that we have to, or I was told growing up, you know, with certain chronic illnesses, like you just kind of have to deal with this. You have to, you know, you kind of have to avoid these foods. You have to do this and there's nothing we can do about it. And I'm like, I don't, I can't, I can't be that practitioner. I can't, I, I've always wanted to be the practitioner that told somebody that this is possible. And I want to inspire that in them, inspire that hope because I know it is possible to feel better from what I was told it wasn't. Totally, totally. And how beautiful is it too that there's so many things available to us that are from the earth? You know what I mean? Right. Like why is that? It honestly seems so backwards to me that people so strongly believe in all of these, you know, lab created things, yet when it's something from the earth, they think, psh, I don't need that. It's that doesn't crazy. work. But like, that's crazy to me. We are nature. Yeah. Why wouldn't something from nature also help us heal? Well, exactly. And I always point out to people that, you know, that are critical of herbal medicine or acupuncture, well, specifically with herbs, um, I remind them that pharmaceuticals come from, you know, extracts of plants and sometimes animals and various different things in nature. So why wouldn't the more raw form? with the synergistic application of, you know, the, the entire plant being used or the entirety of that section, like that's synergistic for the body and for the plant. And it just, it makes sense. Like, how could you not? <laughs> right, right. So. It's like once it clicks for you, then, mm-hmm. I mean, with anything that awakens us and aligns us, it's like, when something clicks within us, we just want to go around and tell everybody, wake up, wake up. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Absolutely. Yeah. So do you have any experience with plant medicine? Yes. Yes, I do, actually. Okay. Um, so I actually just met up with one of my friends who um, actually we didn't even plan on it. We ran into each other yesterday at the beach and I've been feeling really anxious lately. I've been having all of these ideas and goals, which is very much like me. I have a lot of, um, I don't know how familiar with Ayurveda you are, but I have a lot of Pitta energy. And, <laughs> um, which for those of you listening who aren't familiar with Ayurveda, that's like fire energy. And I was just feeling really anxious and I ran into this friend of mine at the beach yesterday and she said, oh, like I'm selling um, mushrooms now and microdoses, like the capsules of mushrooms. And I thought, I think I'm going to do that. You know, I think I'm going to give that a little try. And you haven't done it before? I have. Oh, okay. Yeah, I have. But I haven't had it like pre-measured out in capsules and done it over the course of like, I'm going to do it over the course of a month and I'm going to do 0.2 grams every three days. But um, yeah, it's just amazing how like, you know, something that I thought originally is like, oh, this thing is going to like make me trip and right. blah, blah, whatever. It really actually ended up being like this beautiful, natural anxiety medication and wow. helped me with my anxiety and depression. Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah. And there, are, there are studies that are coming out now that are, you know, very promising for the treatment of PTSD and anxiety and depression using plant medicine. Yeah, absolutely. So if you don't want to talk about this or you want anything cut out, that's totally up to you. But I am curious, what's your experience with plant medicine? <laughs> if you want me to cut any of this out, you can just tell me. Sure, sure. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll decide on that. No, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> like, how much am I going to affect this audience here? Um, well, I guess, you know, so my experience with plant medicine, I actually think is relatively important uh, for my practice based on, you know, Actually, I just recently had a patient ask me about um, about mushrooms specifically, and she brought it up to me while um, after treatment. She's like, so I just want to ask you, how do you feel about psilocybin? Mm-hmm. And so you know, she was, you know, testing the water. She was a little nervous to ask me. I'm like, oh, yeah. you know what? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you about it. And I, I have had experience. And she, she was so relieved. She's like, okay, because I was considering doing it. So I had to, 
you know, I actually uh, talked to her about how to do it well, how to do it safely, you know, what, what it's like and my experiences with it. Um, cause she's, she's a little bit more on the pitta side as well. Yeah. <laughs> so she, she was a little, she was a little anxious about it. And, uh, I told her that for the most part, my experiences were just about like an enhanced reality and an enhanced, like in a good way, like an enhanced sense of well being and introspection and, you know, feeling really good. Um, and I would take like a, what would they say? A normal amount, like like three grams yeah grams, like two three grams two, three that's grams. a pretty decent little journey <laughs> right right so like so and I told her I'm like you want to be out in nature because I I would go out in nature and gosh I was in I was in Sarasota at the time and we lived in this like little neighborhood that we could walk around it was really safe and there was just trees everywhere and I like tripping during the day like that's yeah. it's just I love seeing all the colors it's just beautiful um and I like to be somewhere close by for like, you know, bathroom trips and snacks and stuff if you need it. But (laughs) so like being completely in nature, like I do want to have that experience, but you know, I wanted to be comfortable for the first Mm -hmm. or first or second time. So, um, I would walk around and I would literally hug trees so I can officially say I become a tree hugger. Me too. (laughs) I always joke that if I'm ever going to eat mushrooms, I need to be somewhere that I can have a bonding experience with an oak tree. Yes. (laughs) Yes, absolutely. Oh my gosh. So, (laughs) so funny. So, you know, people talk about all these like epiphanies and huge experiences that they have on plant medicine and I'm I'm a little jealous because I haven't I've I, like a handful of times that I've gone on these experiences and I haven't had that big epiphany and some people don't which is fine but I'm jealous so <laughs> <laughs> so I uh I yeah I've just had these really cool experiences where I think something that hit me was when I was lying down in the park just like in the grass just Soaking it in, I think I was peeking at the time in one of those cheesy four-person circles when we're all laying in the grass. No <laughs> lie, it was awesome. It was so cute, and we were just staring at the sky, staring at the clouds. It's a gorgeous day, and I actually start seeing all these patterns, and I start seeing like just beautiful geometric patterns in the sky, in the light, in the trees. And I'm like, oh my God, that's what they're seeing. That's what everybody else is seeing. That's what they're painting. Oh my gosh, I get it. And I, and I'm sure you've, uh, you've heard of Alex Gray, right? His, uh, his artwork. Oh yeah. One of my friends got me a little sticker with some of his art and I have it hanging right by my bed. Oh, it's incredible. Yeah. So, um, which is actually really cool because Alex Gray, his wife's name is Allison, which is adorable. (laughs) And so, and my fiance's name is Alex. So that's great. (laughs) So I'm like, oh, so cute. (laughs) And, um, (laughs) so anyway, uh, so yeah, he, he's this artist who he tripped and did all this artwork and he actually, a lot of his artwork is on uh, tool albums. I'm sure there are some tool fans that are probably out there uh, <laughs> listening to this <laughs> and yeah, he, he would just paint all this artwork and it, it was, in, it was just incredible to witness the same thing that they put out there. And it, it was, it was just so cool. And I would see it like going to bed, like behind my eyelids. I'd just go on this like visual journey yes. as I'm like, I'm just trying to sleep, but this is really cool. <laughs> <laughs> like, thanks universe, but I'm trying to go to sleep now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yes. I totally know what you mean. The first time I ever experienced mushrooms, it was, um, New Year's Eve. And one of my friends and her boyfriend were going to come over And we were planning on drinking, but then I remembered her saying that she had a baggie of mushrooms, and I was like, how about you just bring those? Yes. I did the same thing, New Year's Eve. That was a total event. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. (laughs) Way better than drinking that night. Just have a trip. Enjoy yourself. Right? (laughs) That's, like, the best way to bring in the new year. (laughs) So, um, yeah, I had this, like, nice backyard. I was living in Orlando. There was, like, a few trees in the backyard, and it was nighttime, but I remember looking up at the sky, just laying in my backyard and seeing these geometric patterns in the stars and in the, like, silhouettes of the leaves of, like, the trees. He's hanging Beautiful. over and I just heard I was getting this download from the universe over and over again it's okay to be where you are it's okay to be where you are and that was the first time 
honestly, since I'd had my Kundalini awakening, that was the first time that I felt grounded, that I oh, felt wow. like it was okay to be where I was. It was like oh. a reminder to just take a breath, be here like you don't have to constantly be rushing to the next place so for me i feel like that's what mushrooms teach me personally they just like i mean i said to my neighbor the next day i feel so grounded and she said yeah eating the earth will do that to you and i was like exactly oh. <laughs> exactly and it's the same thing it's the same thing with herbs it's the same thing with mushrooms like it is a very grounding experience because the you know there's a difference between for us sensitive people there you would definitely tell the difference between taking lsd and taking mushrooms definitely mushrooms has a much more earthy grounded physical feel to it than totally yeah than acid absolutely yeah <laughs> i i did experiment with acid a couple times and it was just a little bit and it was fun i'm not gonna lie sure. but it wasn't I think acid was the kind of like the final straw for me <laughs> that was like, okay, maybe I leave the synthetic stuff alone. Yes. You know, yes. I have a rule now that mm -hmm. just blessings from Mother Gaia. That's absolutely. <laughs> and I, I tend to stick to that myself because, yeah, I've, I've had experiences with with acid and, and again, great experiences, but it just feels like there's less of a grip when you're taking yeah. that and yeah it's it's much less of a of an experience than like a grounded experience right mm -hmm. right wow that's awesome thank you for sharing your plant medicine experience <laughs> thanks um so a question that i normally ask people in the very beginning of the podcast that i forgot to ask you oh, yeah. <laughs> is what do you do to raise your soul's vibration Ooh. you personally so to raise my soul's vibration. So it's kind of interesting because oh, I have I have quite a bit to say about this part because Do your thing. <laughs> and I promise it won't be long. No, um, make it as long as you want. It's fine. <laughs> um so we so as sensitive people, we do spend a lot of time like being concerned about raising our vibration and, you know, being connected and maintaining that connection and, you know, keeping the bad stuff out. And early on in my childhood, I want to say like 11, 12 years old, uh, my mom exposed me to like auras and intuition and she would talk to me about it. And she'd bring me to these little workshops where you could like experiment with like seeing like visualizing auras and meditating cool. and uh, I'm so grateful for that opportunity and I found that meditation came so easy and as a child of course it did you know children and animals are so much more connected it was great and everything that we did just made so much sense I I was like that's what that feeling is that's what that looks like oh my gosh like just getting all this information early on and then mm -hmm. as, as I got to being a teenager I was still so sensitive and then I started like having these experiences, like seeing like visualizations of like different body forms and seeing colors and all this other stuff. I was like, okay, this is too much, too much. I don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> um, it, it was so easy for me to connect and it's so easy for us as sensitives to connect. And part of, we want to use, you know, raising our vibrations to, you know, keep being up, like keep being up and out when, I think part of our journey is actually, you know, being a human being. 3D is dense. 3D is heavy and dense and life is ridiculous. And um, it's it can be a lot for us. And that's why we have all these things happening to our bodies all the time and things that are uncomfortable and weird experiences with our boundaries. Is I think part of the journey is actually to be be grounded. To mm. I think part of the journey is actually to integrate into our bodies, not necessarily to throw away the ego or, you know, discount our physical experiences. Like these are, we're here for a reason. And I'm, I'm realizing the older I get to raise my soul's vibration is to be so present with myself and whether that is yoga or just, you know, spending time reading, whether that's painting, my favorites so far are honestly in the mornings, I just kind of lie there in my bed quiet and I find that's the happiest time of my day usually just 
being with my own thoughts, myself, not rushing to go anywhere for a few minutes of my day. And then yoga, I feel like one with myself again, like really keeping connected. Mm-hmm. And so it's, it's through our activities where we already know when we're in that soul space, like we already know. Yeah. So that's my take on raising your soul's vibration. Be, spend time with your body, spend time yeah. with yourself. I love that. Mm-hmm. I had the realization yesterday that being in flow is surrendering to how you feel so that you can stay in alignment because you're right so many times especially in the spiritual community we hear things about raising your soul's vibration and we hear all these things about positive affirmations and ego death and all this and but it's like there is a reason that we're having a human experience and it's to learn you know what i mean like we're here to go through all these things so by surrendering to how we feel in the present moment like for me you know i i wanted to start working on planning a retreat today i'm planning a retreat for september and that's so exciting to me that is but my neck hurts so (laughs) so i'm like you know i'm just chilling today i've done a couple things but other than that i'm just gonna listen to my body and when we don't listen to our bodies then that's when we create this imbalance they get louder yeah the bodies get louder if we're not paying attention absolutely so something i like to do as a as a practitioner is i i tell my patient well or show my patient that we need to give our issues our emotions our physical problems anything that we're experiencing we need we need to give those experiences the microphone just sit in it for a second because you're spending all of this energy and time you're you're seeing me to get away from whatever it is is hurting you and it's so important to give it the microphone for a second and all that means is just you can just lay there and i've had i've had so many people cry on my table <laughs> i can like just numerous people cry on my table and that's because that the space is allowed you're allowed to feel that way and you spend so much energy and it's exhausting just in circles trying to feel better when all you need to do sometimes is just sit in it and it can't it doesn't last forever that's the thing it doesn't last forever once you give it that voice you'd be surprised at how quickly it lifts up and feels okay like you finally feel okay yeah it seems like whenever we try to suppress things we are just inviting them to amplify, right? Mm-hmm. So I like to think of like shadows, pain, all of those things that feel like they're bogging us down as like a child, right? So if we can like take a step back and listen, like it's like when you're having a conversation with someone and your friend's kid runs up and is like pulling on her skirt and like to you, it's like, we're just trying to have a conversation. But Mm -hmm. if someone would just bend down and talk to the child and say, what do you need? Right. You know what I mean? What's going on? And just let the kid talk for a little bit. Yeah. Then you can continue your conversation. Absolutely. (laughs) Absolutely. And like, I, I'm a huge proponent for therapy because at the same time that I'm giving somebody uh, herbal formula for something or acupuncture. And if it's often for, you know, an emotional component, I let them know, I'm like, look, I want you to be able to talk to either a licensed uh, professional and while like with talk therapy, something while you're verbalizing your issues while you're with me, or if you have like a trusted family member or friend, that's, you know, if you can't do both, you know, and yeah, so you need to be able to, you know, give that child that opportunity to speak. And I know with uh, different therapies, you're like, oh, I feel this way. I feel this way. I want to get rid of it. And you can actually try and chase an issue that you're having when it's not ready to pop up, when Mm. it's not ready to be cleared. It's, I I run into that a few times myself where I was so anxious to just like clear everything out of my system. And, uh, like with hypnotherapy, if you've, if you've heard of that before, actually my my former co-host was a hypnotherapist. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. (laughs) So, oh, I need to listen to that one. So, (laughs) so I've had experiences where I actually had, I, I was so excited to chase like, oh, where's the root of all this crap that I'm having? And I would go in with the intention to fix it. And I sat there for like, oh gosh, like so many, like three hours doing breath work and it would not budge. Mm. And I kept getting, you're not ready. Mm. So there's so much in divine timing. 
there is so much in divine timing. It's like, it's not ready. It's not ready to pop up. It's not ready to clear. So part of it is also <laughs> trusting the process. Yes. Big number two is trusting the process. <laughs> Absolutely. Like so many people think whenever they first get it, get started on this path of holistic, metaphysical, spiritual healing that, oh, I'm going to go in and I'm going to clear out all this gunk and I'm going to be done with it. Mm-hmm. No. <laughs> oh, yeah. It does not work like that. <laughs> I had gone into it with that mentality and man, was I thrown to the wall. <laughs> yeah, it's this constant process and it does all happen in divine timing, you know? It's like we are meant to carry those things with us for a certain amount of time so that they can teach us what they're meant to teach us. And also some of them are these self-preservation mechanisms that we hold on to that are protecting us in a certain way. And then when we have the awareness to say, okay, well, you know, I don't need that type of protection anymore, then we can let it go. Oh, absolutely. And and even then, like sometimes there, that's a part of us that is still protecting us from possibly a current situation or a thing happening in our life that no, this part is still needed or something like that. And, but if that's not needed, then of course it goes away. That's, that's something that can be dealt with. Absolutely. Yeah, mm-hmm. totally. I, um, I had an experience with ayahuasca for the first time. Oh, wow. Yeah. A couple months ago. And, um, it was something. <laughs> <laughs> That's a way to put it. <laughs> yeah, I went into it with the intention of releasing judgment for myself and others. And lo and behold, I end up next to a young woman who's rolling around in the dirt and making animal noises <gasps> for the duration of the ceremony. So it was like a huge test from the universe. Yes, And I think... I think the reason that I was able to release so much during that ceremony was because I worked, I picked this little tiny thing that Uh I wanted, you know, this little tiny intention rather than saying, I want to release all my ancestral trauma. (laughs) You know what I mean? (laughs) (laughs) I was like, oh, I'm going to try to stop judging myself and stop judging other people. And (laughs) Even then, even when you use these plant medicines, 90% of the work is integration. 90% of the work is keeping that awareness and keeping that that consciousness of, oh, I already did that work. I already <laughs> released that. I don't need to revert back to that, you know? <laughs> yes. And, and there's no efforts in when you release something, there's no efforts at keeping it away. When you truly have released that, yeah, they're, 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 it just, it won't bother you anymore. It, it doesn't come up. Yeah. It's really and interesting. It's interesting too, because I, that was my intention and I do feel like I was releasing in some way, but I think I was more so releasing judgment to past situations that had happened in my own life. Mm. Because I did notice during the ceremony, um, I don't know how familiar you are with ayahuasca, but you... Eh, A little bit. (laughs) You throw up a lot. Yeah. Most people throw up a lot. Mm -hmm. You purge. And for those of you listening, that probably sounds... 